and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, a hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm Jen Liddy. I'm your host. And you know, if you've been following along with me, that my purpose is to help you move forward and get that thing you really want. And sometimes our stuff keeps us from connecting with our goals. I'm talking too much stuff, like actual stuff. So today I'm sharing Liz Bremer with you. Liz is a professional organizer who understands how when we're bogged down in disorganization disorganization and clutter, we can't move forward toward our goals. Too much stuff keeps you connecting with the things that are really important to you. Too much stuff steals your time, your energy, and your space. So today's podcast episode is filled with absolute gold from Liz. She will teach you how to approach the clutter in your life and do it in a way that feels in alignment with your needs. Listen in for realistic, doable action steps to inspire you to look around and take action right away to help you move toward your goals. I hope you enjoy this interview. Hi, everyone. Welcome to tonight's interview. I'm talking to Liz Bremer tonight. She is the owner of Put It Simply Organizing. She's located in Syracuse, New York, and she, and she made the leap from professional environmental engineer to professional organizer. And tonight, I'm not just picking her brain on how she made the leap, but I'm really talking to her about decluttering because once you clear out the clutter and organize your life, your brain has so much more space to make your goals a reality. So tonight, I'm talking all things decluttering with Liz. And Liz, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. So can you tell us a little bit about your business and how this business came to be? Sure. All right. So we are a professional organizing business in central New York. So we serve people um, who are just feeling overwhelmed with their stuff, with their life. Um, Anything that can be organized, we do it. We do stuff. We do time. We do it all. And so how this came to be is I was working in an engineering consulting firm for about eight or nine years and wanted to change it up, do something different and just get some more freedom in my life. And uh, I had children and that really changed a lot of things. So I knew there was something bigger that I wanted to do. And so I, I wrote down all the things that I'm good at, the things that I like to do, and organizing was top of the list, top of both lists. And so um, I got linked up with the National Association, which is the National Association for Productivity and Organizing Professionals, and took some training, read a gazillion books, (laughs) and made a business out of it. And so here I am, nine years later, I've been certified as an organizer, and uh, I I, I love it, and I, I never would do be doing anything else. This is it. This is my calling. What I'm curious about is, let's talk decluttering. Why is decluttering important? When we're overstressed and overtaxed by the visual the mountains of, of stuff around us, it, it impacts our mental clutter, and, and it increases, and it causes stress. So there was a recent study done that um, specifically women – have increased levels of cortisol, which is the stress hormone, when they are in their homes and they are in an area that is over over cluttered. So they get in their heads about it. Absolutely, yeah. And it stresses yeah. them out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think you've hinted at this, but my question is, should everybody be decluttering? Like, is decluttering for everybody? Mm. I think decluttering is for everyone. And there's one big reason, and that is when we do declutter, we're never done. Organizing isn't a one and done deal. There's maintenance involved in order to keep your spaces decluttered, 
organized. And so you have to go back and tweak systems that you set up before to serve you and who you are now and what your space is serving you for. So decluttering is for everyone and, it, it, and it's an ongoing, ongoing project. So how then do you like start, especially for somebody who's got a lot of stuff, how do you know which space to choose? That's a great question. So it's often the case that people do come to me and say, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't know where to start. And my answer to that is start in the area that's bugging you the most. And it's that simple. What area is bugging you the most? Start there. Sometimes it feels like we have to do something first in order to make that project happen. So sometimes I hear, well, I need to organize my basement so that then I have room to store the stuff that I want to store in my basement from my kitchen or another place. But um, that, that is not actually where I would suggest to start. I'd start in your living spaces and the spaces that are bothering you the most. And then if you have things to store, bring them down closest to the space where they will eventually go and have them sit there for a while. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be there when you get back and back around to it. Um, but the goal is to make your everyday life better as soon as possible. That'll be motivating and you'll be keeping on with the project. So I love that way that you said that. Keep, uh, make your everyday life as good as possible right now. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. Don't wait. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you start decluttering and you feel resistance from either family members or a partner and they're worried or they don't want to participate, what do you do with that? Yeah, that's difficult. And you know, that is also very common. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes I'll, I'll have clients say, I'm ready. I want to do this. I'm on board, but my husband or my wife is not. And so what I suggest is to just start with yourself, start working on yourself and your own stuff. Cause we can't make decisions for other people and we can't make decisions on other people's stuff. Right. But you can work on your own stuff in your own spaces. So start there. And be, take a non-judgmental, easy approach with your significant other or someone, whoever you're living with. And eventually there's, a, there's an organizing bug that will hit your home, most likely, and they will jump on board and you'll, you'll soon look around and see that they're organizing too. And it, it's, it's a magical thing. So this happens more often than not, as long as you take that slow, non-judgmental, really nice approach to it. I've had that experience myself where I wanted to overhaul the house and I started with closets. Like it, it took me several years to really get everything the way I wanted it because I chipped away a little at a time. And my yeah. husband was kind of like happy with how things were and he did not. And in this vision, I also, of course, had like, let's get a new couch and then let's paint the walls, which was his biggest fear, of course, right? Like, because once you start getting yeah. rid of things, you start saying like, oh, this could be really nice. This, <laughs> I want this to feel better. And at the end of it, he, he wasn't like negative about it, but he wasn't like yay, rah, rah about it. But at the end of it, he was mm -hmm. like, Jen, your vision really like came to life. Like I can see now why you were doing this. So he really got on board, mm -hmm. but I had to be patient and just not get mad at him for not being excited about it because it was hard. It was change. You got it. Yeah. That's exactly the right attitude I'm asking people to have. Right? Oh, me. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> um, so what are some other struggles that your clients encounter when they're decluttering? Mm. There's a couple main points that I want to address here. The first one is there's this thing we call zigzag organizing. And this, this is a common challenge for people. So what happens is, I'll just give you an example. Let's say that we're going to organize your office. And so we start with, um, we're going to start on the bookshelf and, and start decluttering the bookshelves. And then we find some things that need to go to other rooms. So we walk and we put them in the other rooms. And then you're like, well, I need to put the books on that bookshelf. And so now you start working on that one. And so as you can see, you're going room to room, putting things away, opening things up, making mini messes all over the place. Nothing's getting completed, right? So that's called zigzag organizing. It's a very common problem. Um, and what we need to do is stay anchored and focused to the task and the space that we, we have in mind. Um, I use bins to keep me anchored to the space. So I have three bins, uh, a put elsewhere, donate, 
recycle, then I have a trash bag. So I line those right up along the, the perimeter of the room and that keeps me anchored and in the space. So I'll stay there and not be running around the house or throwing something away in the recycle bin in another room. We're staying there the whole time and we're working in there. So, so that's a very people, common. You keep people really focused in that way. That's a great tactic. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you stay anchored, right, to the project that you set out to do. You'll get a lot more done that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other challenge I see people have is the inability to let things go. And so it's, it's hard, right? It's hard because we have spent money and time acquiring these things in our home. And that's hard to say, all right, I'm, I'm going to let it go, you know? And so, sometimes it's harder for some than others. And so what I encourage you to do is to define the function of the room that you are decluttering. What are you going to be doing in that room? What are the activities that, that you are going to be doing? But also what items do you need in order to do those activities? Look around and see the stuff that's not needed in the space for the function. And that's the stuff that we either need to find another home for, mm -hmm. consider letting go, or things like that. That's, that's what you'll be making decisions on. So inability to let things go, big, big, big challenge for a lot of people. But just, I encourage you to keep your organizing goals in mind. Why are you doing this in the first place, you know? Keep that in mind and keep that as a driving motivator for when those decisions are getting tough. You don't want to let things go because you've spent time or money or energy, but you know it's for the greater good. I have some specific questions from some of my clients that, I, that, that tie right into this. So the first one right. is, when you have a bookshelf and you are yes. a person who loves books, but you mm -hmm. want to clean up your bookshelf, yep. what do you do if you don't want to get rid of the books and how do you declutter a bookshelf? All right. So it's, it, this is a great question because this actually comes, comes a lot up in sessions. I've found that a lot of my clients who are, you know, highly educated, uh, they love their books. They love their books. They're their friends, right? So I'll often say, all right, we're it's time to work on the bookshelf. And oh, no, no, no. I, I know I'm not going to get rid of anything. But if you literally go one by one and look at your books, are these serving me now for who I am now? Or are they college textbooks that I know I'll never need again? You know, think, have I read this novel and didn't like it? There's always something that we can let go of. We just need to find it. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're going to find most often than not that there are things that you can get rid of. And that's great. And, and then what I would do on a bookshelf in specific is kind of group your books like items together. So you're going to sort likes with likes. These are textbooks. These are, um, if you're a wine enthusiast, these are wine related books, you know, whatever it is, likes with likes. And then you're going to arrange the bookshelf according to, to the categories that you, that you set up. Um, sometimes another strategy would be, do I use these books in this space? So for example, reference books in your office, but maybe you tend to read novels in your bedroom and you could move them to the bookcase in your bedroom. So kind of think of it that way. There, don't pressure yourself too much to get rid of a ton of books because like I said, sometimes they are friends and they, they're, they're small. They don't take up a lot of space. If they are causing an issue in your space and overwhelming your life, then we need to talk and make some changes. But for the most part, people have a reasonable number and we can make it happen. So those are good tactics again. But I also love that you're yeah. really like, you really have to understand your client's mentality. You really have to understand that they love their books. Yeah. The next question is about uh, photographs. Do you yeah. have a way that you order you know, physical photographs. And then there's this, you know, new problem I, I, I hear about from people. They have like thousands and thousands of digital photographs. Do you have a strategy for either of those? Yes. So for, for paper photographs, for hands, whatever we want to call. Yeah. Paper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do. Um, okay. So for, for photographs in the non-digital form, 
I suggest you start with the purging part. So you're going to go through, and in the 80s and 90s, we had to <laughs> develop them. There was often free duplicates. We don't need duplicates. So that's an easy 50% often that we can kind of toss away or give to someone. The person in the photo, make a, make a little envelope and send it along. So get rid of all your duplicates. Get rid of anything that's fuzzy. Uh, it, it's not... It's not capturing the moment like you'd like it to be. So pare them down. And then you want to figure out how to get them organized. And in my experience, the best way that I have found for most of my clients is to sort of organize them by era. So what I mean by that is, let's say elementary school, then we have like early teen, and then we have college years, and then we have pre-spouse, and then we have spouse only. Then we have children. You see what I mean? So you go on and on with your eras. And that way you're not killing yourself to say, was this 1984 or 1997? You're just doing it like that. And the easiest way to start is just to grab a bunch of shoe boxes and start organizing like that. And then if you want to get fancy and pull out the best of the best and make albums, that's a great second step, the second tier. But start with, start with your shoe boxes and go by era. Get rid of all, all the stuff that's not great and you'll be off to a really great start. I love that answer because it's a non-perfectionistic answer. You it's, got it. <laughs> it's, it's like gisty, right? Like you get the gist of this era and the gist of that era. And the other thing that I love that you said is get shoe boxes. Everybody's got like boxes laying around. You don't have to go to the container store or organize or order anything from Amazon. You can find what you have in the house and use those. Like I... This is the place where for my clients, the perfection bug will keep them from doing this task. That is a huge, huge problem with organizing is exactly that. Perfectionism does get in our way. Absolutely. It, per perfectionism causes procrastination. And so better done than perfect. Yes. You know? And never um, done, right? Like perfect, yeah. but never done. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Perfect, but never done. is it, It's not serving us. Right. So yeah, I, that's, that is my motto. <laughs> um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention, um, you mentioned perfectionism. Sorry, what was the other thing? Digital photographs? Digital photographs, yes. Okay. Digital photographs. So often is the case that our existing software that we already have on our devices and computers will help us to be organized in this realm. If you use, if you have an iPhone, Photos, or Android, there are ways to search your photos and find what you're looking for very easily. I wouldn't put a lot of pressure on myself to purge in this realm because it's going to take a lot of time and what's the payoff? All right, so it, it's, it's worth it to just kind of, again, let the perfectionism go and say, I have a ton of photos. This is, this kind of organizes it already. But the big thing about digital photography is to make sure that you're backed up, backed up once, backed up twice. You have it on your phone, but is it on your, on a cloud? You know, are you saving it in another place on your hard drive? Where are these going? And are they safe if one or two devices fails? That's really the most important thing. Right. Yeah. So an external yeah. hard drive, maybe even in addition to the cloud. Yeah, that makes a lot Absolutely. of sense. Absolutely. So yep. taking the time to do that versus taking the time to go picture by picture by picture on your computer is a better use of your time. Ah, absolutely. Yes. I love that answer. Great. Yep. Um, tell me what you love about helping people do this work. Mm, I love so many things. <laughs> All right. I love, I love working with people. I love when someone has a vision and they're not really sure either where to start or how to do it. They may not have their organizing skills perfected and I can show them this is the metho methodology that we use. It works every time. Let's try it out. And next thing you know, I turn around and they are doing it. They're doing it themselves. I, 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 they're like, okay, we have to start with sorting and purging. And I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> so it's really rewarding to see that skill transfer, to see people taking off with it, doing it themselves, doing it in other spaces that we hadn't even talked about. It's empowering and it's exciting. And it clears that mental clutter 
and all those things and free, free, you find freedom in this. You're able to do the bigger, more important things in life when you're not run down and taxed by totally. external clutter. Oh my God, totally. Right. The thing is in a situation like this, because I deal with this with my clients who want to, who want to bring an idea to life or reach a goal, right? Mm-hmm. I know what it feels like to be on the other side of all the hard work, the fear, the insecurity, the self-judgment, the, um, the perfectionism, the people pleasing. Like I know that you have mm-hmm. to like, you have to swim through all of that crap to get to the other side. Right. And you know, for your clients that it's worth it because like the, the, the smile on your face, the freedom that it brings, the like the lightness, but it's so yeah. hard to convey that to a client who can only see the hard work in front of her or the resistance. Yes. And that's so how why do you I like help to- them get through that. Yeah, great question. Is the define your why right at the very start before you even start your project? Why? Why are you wanting to declutter? Why are you wanting to change this room into a gym or whatever it is? Define the why, write it down, write it on the mirror, write it on a sticky note, put it everywhere. And when those decisions are overwhelming, you don't know where to start, you don't know what to do, you don't want to let this go. That's when you revisit that why and get yourself motivated again. Self-care is really big in this. You have to... You, you have to have good self-care as well when you're undertaking all these big things. And by um, that, you mean being nice to yourself, not judging yes, yourself. Yes, absolutely. Yes, all of that. And even, even down to like, make sure you have water, make sure you're eating protein, make sure you're giving yourself breaks and rewarding yourself. All these things are so important, important when you're embarking on a really hard, new, big task project. So much of your process is so similar to my process. It's like, you know, it's all the same thing, except you're dealing with physical clutter and Mm -hmm. it requires you to get rid of mental clutter, right? And only then can we talk about like what we want our life to look like once we, we have to clear that stuff out. Yeah. I love, I love this. If I didn't already have my business, I'd be like, can I come work for you? I (laughs) love organizing and decluttering so much. Yes, I can tell. I love it. (laughs) What kind of results do your clients experience by working with you? How is their life better? So some of the testimonials and feedback that I've gotten the most is two words, life changing, life changing. It really is a new perspective on stuff. How you live your everyday life is very different when you're shopping, different perspective, totally on stuff. Um, And I think that, like you were mentioning just now, clearing the external clutter helps you clear the internal clutter. And then that opens yourself up for all big, important things in your life that you just feel stuck and overwhelmed by. And, you know, it's interesting because I find that it's a good training ground too for other bigger projects. So you start with just your life in your home. And if you can conquer that and get over that, what you can change the world. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. You're so singing my song. I love this. Yeah. You know what I found when I decluttered, uh, I used to be a very big shopper and I actually wrote about this in my blog this week where I would shop so much mm-hmm. that I would actually, I was in debt at one point in my life because of shopping. I had yeah. so much stuff. I would like, if I bought a sweater in red, I would also buy it in pink and maybe in blue and maybe in black. Uh-huh. Cause I just loved the sweater so much. And so yeah. now once I decluttered, I'm, almost, I'm like ruthless in my house. Like I really don't let things live here if, if they don't serve me. Right. And now when I go shopping, if I find a comfortable pair of pants, I'll want to buy it mm-hmm. in every color. <clears throat> but I really have to ask myself the question, like, do I want this in the house? Do I have space for this? How does it serve me? And the decluttering has, has done a whole bunch of mental things for me, but it has uh-huh. saved me so much money. And I don't shop for entertainment anymore because that used to be a way that I entertain myself. It's just not a way I entertain myself anymore. Yep. It's It's also not a way I can soothe myself anymore though too. That's another Uh, thing. Like I have to find a different way when I'm anxious, like I used to go shopping or if I'm unhappy, uh I used to go shopping. So I had to find different ways to, to deal with that. Yeah. 
Yep, that makes a lot of sense. It's almost like take it out of the hobby list. Shopping yes. can't be a hobby anymore, right? right? So something that you said about shopping made me remember there, there are a couple questions that you can ask yourself when you're shopping. And one of the questions is, do, where am I going to put this when I get this home? That question alone might stop you in your tracks 90% of the time. Because we often, we see it in the store, it looks pretty and fun, but it's not fun when you bring it home and it's in the bag and you've got to take it out of the bag, do something with the receipt, unpackage it, and then what? Then what? And so we need to find a place for it. And that can be overwhelming, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, so, I realized this when I was, when I would like empty the dishwasher, I hated emptying the dishwasher. Oh. And I also hated putting away laundry, right? And I realized the reason I hated doing those two tasks was because I had three freaking sets of plates and I had too many glasses. They didn't fit in the cupboard. I was like, yes. I hate doing this task because I have no place to put this stuff. Or my son, when he was little, he had so many clothes and like it was, he didn't need that many clothes. I, I do the laundry. Like he, he doesn't need right. the clothes, right? So yes. It makes, like, it makes sense. If you don't like something, you have to examine why you don't like it. Oh, Jen, you're so right. So you have to find the breakdown in the system. What part of the system that you are doing is broken? What, what part am I getting stuck at? What part do I not like? And so you found, oh, well, I have homes for these things, but the homes are over full. So what do you do? You got to lessen the load. Make it fun to put them away. Make it easy. That's, that's the name of the game. Make maintenance easy, and then you'll be able to maintain it. So. I found I was keeping all of these sets of dishes. I had gotten one set for my wedding and another set my mother bought me because I, I just loved it. And then another set was from my grandmother. I only used one of the sets consistently. And mm -hmm. so I got rid of everything else, but I kept them for a long time because I kept saying, what if I have a dinner party or what if I host a gigantic Thanksgiving? And I never did. I never did have a gigantic dinner party and I never did host a gigantic Thanksgiving. I was keeping all of the stuff for a maybe what if that never happened. That's right. That's right. And you know what the beautiful thing is? So let's say what if. What if you do do that tomorrow? Then what are you going to do? You're going to find the resourcefulness in yourself and figure it out. You're going to go get some nice plastic plates or, you know, you're going to, you're going to figure it out and you're going to figure it out in a way that doesn't involve, oh, I miss this stuff. Maybe for a bleak moment, you will say, I wish I had that. But the 90 million other moments where you are happy that you could unload your dishwasher in a way that's easy every day, that that's pays off more than hanging on to three sets. Yeah. So yeah, you get it, girl. <laughs> you oh, get I it. love it. I love it. I, you know, I was going to ask you uh, what pro tips would you give to somebody, but you have given us so much gold here tonight. So thank you so much. Um, yes. Let's talk about how people can connect with you and work with you or learn from you. Sure. Uh, so you can go to my website, which is www.putitsimplyorganizing.com. I have some information on there. I have a contact sheet. You can fill, fill it out and get a hold of me that way. Phone number, call, text, 315-256-8746. I also have a Facebook page, Put It Simply Organizing. So any of those ways is great. I also try to do some speaking engagements throughout the community. You'll find me at Fayetteville Free Library a couple months a year and various other places. But all that info can be found on my Facebook page. So you're really local to Syracuse right now. So I highly encourage my local people to please reach out to you if you need help with this stuff. Because as we talked about tonight, it's not just like the time to do it or the system right. to do it, which you've shared with us a lot of that, but it's the mindset work. You really need you support it. with the mindset work. And I know my clients crave accountability. So if you gave them a, I imagine with your clients, you give them a homework assignment. They might not yes. get it done till the second before you arrive, but they're going to get it done because you're going to show up, right? You got it. Yes. So if you are somebody who struggles with that kind of stuff, reach out to somebody to help you. Even if you don't live in Syracuse, there's somebody, there, there are organizers all over the country, right? And you, if you need help, get help. Reach out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what's in the future for your business? Do you think we didn't talk much about business tonight, but I always like to find out like, what are, what are women who are creative like you and, and creating freedom and creating their own business? What, what's, what's next? All right. What's next? So on my big list of projects, 
I am currently working on writing a book, which I'm really excited about. Woohoo! So got that on my list. Um, and then from there, I feel like I'm just going to ride the roller coaster, see what happens, and take it from there. But that's my big, my big project for 2019. That's a big project. That's yes. amazing. Congratulations on deciding and just starting it. Because what a lot of people I find do is like creative women are so creative and they have idea, 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 and they won't commit to one idea. Yeah. And yeah, then they just never get anything done. I know. <laughs> I know. So, yeah. So congratulations on committing. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you, Liz, for checking in with us tonight and giving us so much actual valuable tactics. You're so, I don't know, you're just like knowledgeable and, and you're not, not judgmental about stuff. So that I think is really important to not be judgmental about you know, other people's stuff, right? I completely agree yeah. with you. Yes. Jen, thank you so much. This it was, was such great. a fun time to talk to you. So if you are too. local to the, C, to the 315 area, please check out Put It Simply Organizing. Follow Liz. She's on Facebook. Are you on Instagram also? Not on Instagram, no. Okay, so find her on Facebook. And uh, if you want to comment underneath and you have a question, please comment and tag either one of us because we will be back to answer for sure. Thanks again, Liz. I really appreciate it. I mean, seriously, are you not inspired to go get some boxes and bags and clear out some stuff? Make room for what's important to you. I speak from experience. I've been teaching people how to clear out the clutter because it creates so much time and energy in your life. We can clear out the clutter of your calendar, clear out the clutter of your mind, and start you moving to create space so that you can create the dream living inside your head. Did you know I have a free Facebook group that talks about ways to create more time every single day? Join us there. Search for Time Masters in Facebook and apply to join. It's free and all you have to do is answer two questions to come on in. It's time to get more time back in your days so that you can start taking action on your dream. See you in the Facebook group and I'll see you here on the podcast next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. Or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.